Hi everyone, it's KJ here. And if you're someone like me who has a lot on their plate, or you're just always anxious about one thing or another, you'll understand this downward spiraling cycle that I've grown accustomed to over the past couple of years. This is a cycle where you know you need more sleep, but there's so many things on your mind that it feels almost impossible to relax, which ultimately makes it feel impossible to fall asleep. Throughout the last decade, I haven't had the best relationship with sleep. Through sports and academics in high school, and through grueling MIT semesters, I don't think there's ever been a point where I've been satisfied with the amount of sleep I'm getting. Earlier last year, I was gaining a lot more responsibilities from our startup, to school, to my relationship, to the point where I was getting such little sleep at such low quality every day that it was affecting my day to day. I'd get constant headaches and would feel like I couldn't really do anything about it. So in this video, I'm going to give five tips that actually helped me get more quality sleep. Let's get right into it. Later in this video, I'm going to talk about how I actually get my sleep data, but the data doesn't mean anything if you don't have actual solid metrics to go for and to set goals against. The metric that I look at is sleep debt, which is the total amount of time that you deviate from your ideal sleep time over the course of a two week period. For me, the metric has given me the ability to have something to set goals against. This leads directly into a proud channel partner of mine and the sponsor of today's video, which is the Rise app for better sleep and daily energy. Ever since I was introduced to this app, it's been an app that I consistently use on a daily basis because it really does a great job of allowing me to better understand what my energy schedule looks like. Knowing when in the day I'm going to be groggy or more energized or when I should get to sleep has been great. It really allows me to schedule my day more effectively. There's days where I miss my ideal melatonin window and I can definitely feel the difference because it's just much harder to fall asleep on those days. For someone that holds myself at such high standards, the app also gives me an energy potential where it knows how rested I am and I can actually lower my own expectations for a given day knowing that I may just need more rest. In general, this is an app that I highly recommend. If you use my link in the description, you'll get 40% off the annual Rise membership. All annual memberships also come with a seven day free trial. Although an app like Rise can work independently of other devices, I want to get the most accurate sleep data possible, so I do that with my Aura Ring. For those of you who don't know, the Aura Ring is a wellness tracker that can track both activities and sleep. I use an Apple Watch on a daily basis, but the battery life isn't good enough where I feel comfortable also using it for sleep tracking. Also, I'm someone who consistently sleeps on my side, so having something on my wrist can get uncomfortable. The Aura Ring is able to fit a lot of really useful sensors in a small package that can measure things like heart rate and temperature changes very accurately. A cool tidbit about the Ring is that the NBA actually used these to help monitor their players' health while they were in the bubble last season. It's water resistant up to 100 meters, so you can always have the Ring on, even when you're washing your hands or showering. And its battery lasts around a week, so you don't have to charge it that often. In general, I think it's the perfect device to track sleep with because of the fact that a lot of the times I forget I'm even wearing it. Something that I've taken for granted with my sleep is regulating my body's temperature. We all know that feeling of being too hot so you poke your foot out of the blankets just to get cold again and pull it back in. These moments where your body strays away from its ideal temperatures can really disrupt your natural sleep patterns. There's definitely been those nights where I woke up sweating because I got too hot, or nights where I woke up shivering because I accidentally threw my blankets off when I was sleeping. And in efforts to really improve upon the little sleep I was getting, I fixed this problem to the best of my abilities. Now my Nest thermostat makes sure to keep the temperature in my apartment to between 68 and 71 degrees when it gets closer to the time that I sleep. Additionally, I got this eucalyptus infused bedding set that actually does a great job of regulating your body's temperature. These sheets and comforter are definitely things that I was very skeptical about initially, but now I very rarely wake up sweating or shivering because my body never comes out of its ideal temperature range. That being said, the bedding set is kind of expensive, so keep that in mind, but the link to everything will be down in the description. A good in-between step to take would be to simply set your thermostat to something in the 68 to 72 range in your bedroom. The range can depend on how heavy or light your blankets are and whether you're naturally sleeping hotter or colder. But in general, I have started to consistently sleep the entire night through without moving at all, which has helped me get more quality sleep, even in the nights where I couldn't get a good quantity of sleep. On a similar vein of making sure that my body sleeps the entire night through, 
When I'm in an environment that is particularly noisy or if I don't have blackout curtains, I will make sure that I use a sleeping mask or earplugs when I sleep. I'm an extremely light sleeper and since I have trouble falling asleep, if I wake up from a given sound or a bright light, I can lose hours of sleep. Luckily here in my Palo Alto apartment, it's dead silent and the curtains that I have definitely block out all of the light. But when I was in Alabama or in Boston, I definitely needed to wear blindfolds and earplugs on a daily basis. Something to note though is that a sleeping mask could pick up the oils on your face. So I make sure to always have a rotation of a week's worth of sleeping masks so that I'm always using a fresh one. If you don't switch out your sleeping masks often, you can risk your skin acting up, which has happened to me in the past. In terms of the earplugs, they are also self-explanatory. They just keep me from waking up from any sudden noises and just make sure that I sleep the entire night through. With earplugs though, it's very important that you have a good seal in your ear in order for them to actually do their job. So make sure to read the instructions carefully. The last tip that has really helped me start to sleep better has been staying active. Exercise has its clear health benefits and it can also help sleep both indirectly and directly. Working out can help your sleep indirectly because it's a way for your body to release stress and tension. This can help you fall asleep just by relieving that stress component. But exercising can also help directly by making your body tired and relaxed after the workout that you do. Different people have different ideal workout times, but most health experts would agree that as little as 30 minutes of exercise a day can have a quick and lasting impact on your body's ability to have quality sleep. So whether you're just going out for a brisk walk, lifting weights, playing a sport, or doing yoga, a surefire way to improve your sleep quickly would be to consistently be active. So that's all I had to talk about today. Make sure to let me know in the comment section if you want to see more videos like this one. And because I'm always so stressed and anxious about various things, I really do try to understand how I can improve my body and mind to function near its best on a daily basis. Hopefully some of these tips helped you out. Let me know in the comment section some tips that you use for yourself if you have trouble sleeping. And make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter to stay up to date with what I'm doing. And make sure to subscribe and have your notification bell clicked to stay up to date on my latest videos. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.